Now, you're making the, 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 the key point here, which is everything but AI was weaker at ASML, but AI right. was but strong, was was and yet NVIDIA and AMD, amongst others, were down sharply. Yeah, um, and it was just kind of wrong. I mean, things, you know, people got it wrong. Now, I want to tell you, just well, as they were blowing up, and when I say blow up, I mean, not since, I don't know, like, like the, since they gave away mm-hmm. uh, Manhattan, what, for like 27 shekels? What was that they gave away? Manhattan, 20, the Dutch? $22. Yeah, right? I believe. Peter Stuyvesant? Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, great man. Thank uh, you. Holland Tunnel. Um, but no, that was Holland. What, but yeah. well, I know, that's actually it's related to my, my family. Um, but right when ASMLF. What was the reaction was going, uh, you know, putting NVIDIA in its place, so to speak. What, Jensen Wong was speaking right then. And his quote is, we would like to achieve superhuman productivity. This is at a Lenovo Smarter AI Enterprise Conference. And I thought it ironic that here he's, you know, he's busy taking over the world, but he's also being taken down by ASMLF. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. No. I mean, how was uh, how Samsung doing? Um, Stacey Raskin, who is the, I think, the sort of the... Very good. The, terrible treasure. Yeah. Terrible. Okay. Uh, ASML is not necessarily the best read across to so the rest of the semi cac base, given their focus expertise and lumpy revenue profile. Obviously, also goes on to say NVIDIA, uh, Broadcom, AMD, all bro- are broadly sold off in a move that's potentially overdone. Thank you. I'd be, look, he's good. I guess he's owned by no one. Look, I think Chuck, Chuck has done a great job. I, if we dig in the archives, you'll see a picture of Chuck walking with Jensen. And you know what that means. Upside. Upside, is that what that means? Yeah. Jensen yeah. is everywhere. He is. He's, is there anyone asked, he won't speak to? Well, when I asked him, I said, aren't you too many places? Is it hard? Is it this yeah. or is that? He said, I'm not an actor. What does that mean? Because he's he's living what he does. He gets up at 4 a.m., he works for four hours, and then he goes in and meets people and find out what to do, and he goes find out what's the best stuff to do, and this super AI thing he was talking about yesterday was brilliant. At the Lenovo speech that he gave, it was brilliant. Right. But, I mean, the day before that, the podcast, this podcast, that one, he showed up at the NASDAQ, he's there next to Becky suddenly. I mean, the man is everywhere. David, you're... Th- you're falling Are prey. There, is there a simulation of him? But he doesn't realize is this is the... Agent Jensen. Does Jensen have like three Jensen? Oh, let me get Mike Connie on the phone because he's very good on the agent. Who? Oh, oh the, Chuck likes the Falcons. Falcons do look good for it too. <laughs> yes, Falcons and look I, good. And I've got NVIDIA. We'll look for some potential all time highs. B of A does go to 190. Oh, there today. keeps being these sellers at 140 and they just won't relent. And they ought to go rethink their whole game plan. They should go read the conference call of Taiwan Semi. And they would know that it's foolish to sell. Uh, Drucker Miller with a cry in the beer about wishes that he hadn't sold it. Uh, yeah, uh, the, I don't get the sell call here. Yeah. Because this is, remember, we're, it, one of the things that was mentioned by Dr. Wei on the Taiwan Semi was he's saying it's incredibly early. And yet, yet people are selling NVIDIA. It's incredibly early? And I remember talking to Jensen. I mean, really, like, three trillion, four trillion. He's not thinking about that. What he's thinking about is creating robots that are going to deliver you inexpensive coffee from maybe even Starbucks with Brian Nickel there. And we, we mentioned the Melius chart today looking at OpenAI's new product that. where Ben Reitz says that as inference moves to video and reason, it's going to prompt infrastructure upgrades pretty much everywhere. Yeah, and I was going back and forth with Ben. I, he's, he's pure joy. It reminds me that uh, it's very, very bullish for NVIDIA, and, and also, he says, for Lisa, for, for AMD. Uh, and I totally agree with Ben. Ben's got a beat on a lot of things. And, uh, the companies really respect Ben's work, just so you know. And I'm not just partial Ben because I like his father. I like his father, uh, who's great chemical analyst. I'm partial because he's must read. And he's distinguished himself in the group by having the most cogent recommendations. Uh, and he's quick. It, it reminds me of Katie Huberty. Hmm when she was doing her Apple work, and that's like the, about as high praise as I can get, because like I, like Katie Huberty was a deity, and now she does the charts, she was a deity. And Ben, I think, wants deity status. Gotta work, gotta work hard to be deity. Uh, uh, speaking of expectations, which are not really low, um, and that's NVIDIA, <laughs> the price target today gets raised to 190, at B of A it was 165. Generational opportunity is how they call it, uh, because of the competitive lead that they have now. They talk about recent industry events. They talk about the underappreciated enterprise partnerships and software offerings. 
and the ability to generate $200 billion in free cash flow over the next couple of years. You want to address this? It's been a reasonably volatile week. <laughs> yeah. um, ASML hurt. Taiwan Semi helped. Pick your story yeah. on whatever side of the ledger you, you, you want to be on as it yeah. relates to that. But they are now neck and neck, Apple and NVIDIA are, in terms of what their overall market caps are. Apple's still the biggest, but NVIDIA is right on its heels. As of the close yesterday, we're looking at 3.36 for NVIDIA, 3.53. For Apple, those are skewed a little bit to the upside on both accounts today. There's 3.60 trillion for Apple, 3.38 trillion for Nvidia, but it's getting there, and people think it's going to because of the generational opportunity that some suggest they still have. Yeah, and I thought it was super interesting, like the AM, ASML report, um, you know, which was concerning. And you saw a lot of the semis pulling back as a result, and then you see Taiwan Semi, their print, which was a blowout print, and then all the numbers start to push right back. Um, I think about one of the things that Steph said earlier, when you think about just all the beltways that lead back to NVIDIA, if I think about the power grid as an example and data centers, all the build and all the rage we're talking about with data centers and how much we need to build, where we need to find land for these places, all that goes into chips, right? The chips are what fuel these, fuel the data centers and beltways all the way, all the way back to NVIDIA. So when I think about free cash flow going forward and all the opportunities and all the, all the catalysts, um, it's hard to fight this stock, it's hard to fight and, and say, wait, you know what, it's gone up too much, 180% is too much or whatever. It's still, it's still a great opportunity. People have tried to fight Apple. Uh, they have, they've lost, mm -hmm. right? They've been put on the canvas. All right, we start uh, with NVIDIA, why not? Which is uh, trading higher on a bullish call, B of A Securities raising its price target on the tech giant to $190 from $165, reiterating its buy rating. The firm calling NVIDIA a, quote, generational opportunity with a huge competitive advantage in a growing market. The stock already up nearly 180% just this year. And that's after last year where it's something like tripled. Now, here's the analyst behind that call, Vivek Aria. Vivek, welcome. Good to have you with us. Thank you for having me. You know, I guess the, the, the question in reply to the idea, I have no, no question that, that, that NVIDIA is going to be a great company uh, for a long time to come. But it has already had that generational moment, it would seem to me. So how do you, how do you see it moving multiples higher from here, generationally, I suppose? Sure. Um, you know, so what I think AI is uh, telling us is that it is not just good enough to be a chip maker, right? That you need to make sure that you can scale these chips across a system, that you have software that can be optimized to deliver the best computational performance, that you're taking uh, care of all the energy, uh, right, and the power uh, requirements, that you're working at scale uh, with the supply chain in Asia, and then importantly, that you're working with an enterprise uh, ecosystem. You know, a few days ago, we saw NVIDIA signing the relationship with Accenture, uh, who will train uh, thousands of people to go and deploy NVIDIA-based systems. So I think it takes that end-to-end -end knowledge, and only one company today is able to uh, deliver that. And this is not something you overcome in a day or a year or, or, or two mm -hmm. or three years, mm -hmm. because NVIDIA has been investing in this kind of silicon and software right from the days when they were... Uh, just a gaming uh, company, you know, their, their core operating system called CUDA uh, came out over a dozen years ago. So that's the kind of advantage and lead that they have built, uh, both in terms of their early investments in software and today their scale and incumbency and partnerships with a number of these uh, enterprise software companies and consulting companies. I just wonder, sort of a last question, Vivek, if, um, if the company is inherently cyclical and if there's been any kind of pull forward in demand uh, just to make sure that people have what they need, are we going to look to the other side of that? And I don't know if that's in three or six months time or, or maybe beyond that window. But a, a lot of people who are bullish say they like, literally don't think it's going to be a cyclical business like many of uh, semiconductors yeah. have been through time. No, I, I think every time, uh, you know, we forget that semiconductors are a cyclical industry. They have a way of uh, rudely reminding us uh, that that it is a cyclical industry. Um, usually these cycles tend to last for four years where the time to make uh, uh, money is the first three years. So last year, we had a very strong year. This year is a very strong year. We think next year can be a very good year. And then the cycle potentially rolls over in, in 2026, right? But I think it's only to refresh and then get on to the next uh, technology trend. So we do think there is at least about a year's worth of investment left in this upfront infrastructure deployment that uh, semiconductors are such a critical part of.
All right. Vivek, thanks for joining us, making the Thank bullish you. and generational case for, or at least the case until 2026 uh, for yes. NVIDIA.